As I journey through the land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow, many arrows pierce my soul from without within, but my Lord leads me on, through him I must win. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all pass home at last, ever to rejoice. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all pass home at last, ever to rejoice. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all pass home at last, ever to rejoice. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all passed home at last, ever to rejoice. God bless you. Good morning, Bishop and Mother Joseph. Good morning, Mother Morris. God bless you. Good morning, Pastor and Lady Williams. God bless you both. Good morning, Sister Dawes. God bless you and Minister Dawes. Good morning, Tanya. Good morning, Mother Morris. God bless you and Minister Morris. Good morning, Sister Angela. Good morning. Um, Brother Comfort, God bless you. Good morning, Sister Renee. God bless you. Good morning, Mother Holman. God bless you. Good morning, Mother Davis. God bless you. And Deacon Davis, good morning, Sister Jackson Perry. Good morning, Marcella. Good morning, Sister Jan. Good morning, Elder Smith. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Frederick. Good morning, Alan. God bless you, my nephew. Good morning, Sister Miriam. Good morning, Sister Judy. God bless you, Missionary Domingo. Good morning, Francine. God bless Bless you. Good morning, Deacon and Sister Morris. God bless you both. Good morning, Sister Janice. God bless you. Good morning, Katrina. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Bishop Desmond Alday and Lady Alday. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Jan. Good morning, Sister Hollis. God bless you, Sister Polly. Good morning, Tammy and Jesse. God bless you both. Good morning, Sister Graves. God bless you and Deacon Graves. Good morning, Mother Taylor. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Kathy. God bless you, Brother Butler and the family. Good morning. Good morning, Elder Adams and Sister Adams. God bless you. Good morning, Sister McLeod. Good morning, Sister Harrell Long. God bless you, Pastor Hargrove. Good morning to you and Lady Hargrove. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Sister Pepper. Good morning, Sister Hedrick. God bless you. Good morning, Kimberly. Good morning, Rosalind. God bless you. Good morning. Sister Stewart, God bless you. Good morning, Mother Wilkins. God bless you and Deacon Wilkins. Praise the Lord, Sister Jan. Praise the Lord, Sister Missionary Brian. God bless you, Sister Hedrick. Good morning, Sister Felix. God bless you. Good morning, Rosalind. Good morning, Valencia. Good morning, Bishop Austin. God bless you, sir. Good morning, Sister Roberts. Good morning, Sister Robinson Jacobs. God bless you, Mother Nicholson. Good morning to you. Good morning, Sister Stewart, God bless you. Good morning, Sister Cleckley. Well, good morning and praise the Lord, everybody. And welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you with a biblical meditation and in prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And we continue to witness and see the manifestation of the power of God through the function of prayer, testimonies of healing, testimonies testimonies of deliverance, testimonies of salvation, God just doing what God does when his people pray. When we pray, we can expect God to do amazing things. The Bible says exceeding and abundant
abundantly above all that we ask or even think. So I challenge everybody, everybody today to remain diligent in prayer, to remain focused in prayer, to remain steadfast in prayer because prayer is the gateway by which God is indeed going to bless your life. Your life, hallelujah, is going to be blessed because of prayer, because of the promise of prayer and what God is able to do. As always, if you have a prayer request, we want you to share it with us. If you're on Facebook, you can put it right here in the chat or you can inbox Reginald Davis or inbox Refuge Temple Church. If you're on Instagram, you can place it right there in the chat or you can direct message Pastor RJD, Pastor RJD. And to everybody on the conference call, and thank God for all of our conference call listeners, and to everybody that is um, on YouTube or anyone can use the text line, and you can text your prayer request to 336-567-5358. Again, that number is 336-567-5358. Text your prayer request, and we we are adding them to the prayer list. We are praying over them. And more importantly, we are joining our faith to yours and believing God with you for what God is able to do. I want to move now in our study of the book of Revelation. And so if you would join me in Revelation chapter number four, if you have your Bibles, join me in Revelation chapter number four. We have studied the introduction of the book. And the purpose that is outlined in chapter one, chapters two and three is the second section of the book that deals with the audience of the original letter, which was the seven churches of Asia Minor. And we spent a good deal of time studying each church, the commendations, the um, criticisms and the counsel of the Lord Jesus Christ in dealing with each church. Now we're going to turn to the meat of the book, which deals with the prophetic um, utterances that John received um, while he was on the Isle of Patmos. And we're going to be focused on that um, for a good little while. So we're going to take our time with it. So there's no rush. We're going to walk through this book, um, hopefully trying to explain and share everything we can concerning what the Lord says is, a go is going to take place. So you'll find me in Revelation chapter four, and I want to read verses one through five. Revelation chapter four, verses one through five. After this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither and I will show thee things which that must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. And he that sat, he, he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. I want to stop there, and we're going to deal with the entire fourth chapter, certainly before we're done. But today's subject is a glimpse through the door. A glimpse through the door. As I said a moment ago, this is the third and final section of the book of Revelation, which will cover the rest of the book. And this is now Jesus showing John what will take place, showing John what will come after, what will take place after. And, and that's significant because it is making the point, first of all, John sees he looks and then he sees the door. There's a door and the door opens, giving John a glimpse or a view into heaven. Um, something that um, was rarely revealed 
Even um, Paul had glimpses into heaven. He was taken, the Bible says, into the third heaven. But there weren't a lot of details. In fact, um, Paul said there were things that he saw that were not lawful for a man to utter. So he wasn't able to share fully everything that he saw. But here John gets a glimpse. John gets a glimpse of view into the doorway of heaven. And then he hears the first voice, which he heard as if it were a trumpet. Now, trumpets are significant because trumpets were used to, to, to make noise. They, they were significant. Israel used trumpets quite a bit in their daily life. Trumpets were used to announce the morning. They were used to bring people into warfare. They were used to... um to sound alarms, that the enemy was at foot, and there's going to be a trumpet. You know, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians that the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised. So trumpets are significant. Trumpets are significant. And here John hears a voice, the Bible says, like a trumpet, all right, talking with him and saying, come up hither. Come up here, but come, John, and see what you're, you're looking through the door. I want you to get a full picture of what you're seeing, and I will show you the things which must be hereafter. Now, Revelation is a book of eschatology. Revelation tells us what's going to happen after. It tells us what's going to take place after. So what we're going into in this book of Revelations, for the most part, is going to be things that have not yet taken place. They haven't taken place yet. These are foreshadows. This is information so that we will know what will come. Now, I'm going to say this again. I am not an eschatologist, meaning I'm not here to predict when these things will happen. I'm just here to open up the word and show you that these things will happen with the intent that all of us, me, you, you, everybody that listens or hears or watches the morning prayer that you can be prepared. That's the whole goal. The goal is that all of us are found ready. The goal is not that I can sit here and tell you that on this month and this year, on this day, Jesus Christ is coming. Or I'm not here to point out who the Antichrist is. I'm not here to point out what the, the, the details because the Lord didn't give us the details. In fact, he says no man knows the day or the hour. So if anybody tries to tell you that they know when Jesus is coming, guess what? They're already a liar. They're already a liar because the Bible says no man knows. So if no man knows, how do you know? But what the Lord has given us is an image, a picture, a vision into what will take place in the hereafter. In the hereafter. This is coming after. We're not in the state of revelation right now. We're in the state in the sense of the churches because they reflect the condition of churches throughout the body of Christ. But as it relates to what we're, what John is talking about in this vision, these are things that will happen hereafter. So look at verse two. And immediately I was what? In the spirit. John was taken by the spirit. This was not a carnal vision. This was not a vision that he could access through the flesh. He had to enter through the spirit. The spirit had to give him access. The Bible says, I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men, those things which God has prepared for those that love him. But the spirit has revealed. The spirit revealed it to Paul. He shared what the spirit shared with him. And now John through the spirit is seeing what will happen in the hereafter. Now, I want to point out a couple of things. He says he was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven. I want everybody to look clearly at that phrase, a throne, a throne, a throne, a throne, not one, not two, not three. There was one throne. I think this is important because this speaks to the oneness of God. And if you're going to heaven looking for a throne for the father, for a throne for the son, a throne for the Holy Ghost, it's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. There are not three thrones. There is one throne. There is one throne and there is one person that sat on the throne. Everybody follow me. There's one throne and there's one person sitting on that throne. So we have the one throne and that's significant because it tells us that there's only one God. Yes, God is manifested as Father, as Son, as Holy Ghost. There are there are 
hundreds of names for God in the scripture that are given Alpha, Omega, beginning and end, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Tiskanu. He is revealed in the flesh as Jesus Christ. He lives in us as the Holy Spirit. But guess what? There is only one throne. There is only one throne. And and then the Bible describes in detail him that sits on the throne. The Bible describes it. The throne is key because the throne is a symbol of authority. The throne is in heaven. It's not in the sky, but the throne is in heaven. And the throne is set. The throne is set. A throne is a set place for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The throne is a set place. And it's explained as we go further in the text. There's Jasper that the Bible says is described in chapter 21 as being clear as a crystal. Jasper, some believe, represents a diamond that symbolizes the purity of God. Jasper symbolizes the purity of God. The sardine stone that's there in the throne symbolizes the wrath of God. So there's a place it symbolizes his purity, but it also symbolizes his wrath. The throne is also a place of judgment. When people stand before the throne, it is also a place where one is judged. One is evaluated. One is determined to be guilty or innocent. One is given the sentence of life and death. All of this, all of this is at the throne. Then the Bible says there was a rainbow around the throne. And the rainbow we know is a symbol of God's mercy. That's why in the days of Noah, the Bible says that God put a rainbow in the sky to symbolize that he would no longer destroy the earth by water. It was a covenant that God made with Noah and humanity, but the rainbow symbolizes mercy. So look at this. At the throne, you have purity. At the throne, you have judgment. At the throne, you have mercy. All of this takes place at the throne of God. All of this, all of this comes from the throne of God. Hallelujah. The purity of God. There is no flaw. There is no error. There is no um, uh, suspect, anything suspect about God. There are no ulterior motives because he is the pure and living God. At the throne, there is judgment. Oh God, you, everybody, everybody is going to stand in some way before the the throne of God. You know, when the saints are raptured, the Bible says that we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. That's the throne. And the deeds that we have done are going to be judged and our works are going to be judged. Whether they are hay or stubble or gold or silver, it's going to be judged. So you're going to be judged. You might make the rapture, but you're going to be judged. Your works are going to be judged. You won't be judged relative to sin because Jesus died on the cross for your sins and you have accessed the cross of Calvary, but you will be judged relative to your works. You will be judged relative to what you have done. So there is a judgment at the throne, but thank God because of the blood of Jesus, there's also mercy, hallelujah, at the throne. Because if God went solely, if God went purely on what we have done, purely on our life as sinners, purely on our life as transgressors, none of us would stand. The Bible says if God would mark iniquity, who could stand? If God judged iniquity, who could stand? If God judged each of us relative to what the sins that we've committed without the blood of Christ, all of us would be lost. But because of the mercy that comes to the throne, my God, is not also, it's not only a throne of judgment, it's also a throne of mercy. So we see the jasper, we see the sardine, we see the rainbow, and in the sight like an emerald. So it had a green tint to it. And around about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seat saw I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in right, right, white raiment, and they had their heads crowns of gold. Now, these are the four and twenty elders that you're going to hear about quite often as we walk through the book of Revelation. And they symbolize the church. They symbolize the church. They symbolize these elders represent the church of God and they are there to worship the lamb. They are there to worship Jesus Christ. They symbolize the church. Guess what? We're going to be at the throne. Hallelujah. The church is going to be around the throne. The church is going to be there to glorify he that sits upon the throne. He, we're going to be there clothed in white raiment, symbolizing purity, wearing crowns, symbolizing our 
kinship with Jesus Christ as the king, symbolizing our authority and our elevated and also our rewards, that we're going to be rewarded for making it in. Saints, that's why everybody's got to live right. That's why everybody's got to serve God. That's why everybody's got to obey God, because we want to be seated there at that throne. We want to be a part of this great celebration of the Lamb of God, of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Verse 5, and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices just coming out of the throne, just noise coming out of the throne, just greatness coming out of the throne. Hallelujah. Symbolizing once again, the worship, the adoration, the glory that belongs to God. And then the Bible says there are seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, in front of the throne, and those seven lamps are the seven spirits of God. Those seven lamps, John mentions it in the earlier part of the book, and he mentions it once again, that in front of the throne are the seven spirits of God. Seven doesn't imply that there's more than one God. It doesn't imply that it we are serving a power polytheistic God, but it implies the completion of God. Seven is God's number of completion. It symbolizes the wholeness, the completeness, and the and, and the fact that God exists unfragmented. God exists unfragmented, and the seven spirits of God are referred to in Isaiah chapter 11, verses 2 and 3, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of God and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of God and shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. The symbol, uh, the symbolism of the seven spirits is that God knows, Jesus Christ knows and sees everything. You don't have to worry about him missing anything. You don't have to worry about him not having or understanding everything about your life. The seven spirits are the completion of God. You you can't, in other words, you can't get by him. You can't fool him. You can't deceive him because he has complete understanding and complete wisdom and complete knowledge. He is the fullness of God. Let me just close because my time is up and we're going to keep working through this chapter. But understand that all of us, all of us will see him on the throne. If you're saved, you're going to see him at the throne of mercy. If you're lost, you will see him at the throne of judgment. But every one of us will see him upon the throne. And it's important, saints, and the whole reason why we're sharing this is hopefully to awaken an urgency in the minds of all of the saints that we just have to be ready. If you want to see this in peace, if you want to see this in totality, my brother or my sister, you, me, everybody, we just have to be ready. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. We'll, go, we'll, go, we'll keep walking through the chapter, but let's go before the Lord in prayer. My gracious God, I love you. I thank you. I honor you today for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your love, your kindness. Lord, everything. Lord, even the revelation of your word. We thank you, God, for being able to awaken this morning in our right minds. We thank you for being able to get out of the bed and get prepared to join this great fellowship of believers, my God, from all over the world. God, I thank you, and I'm asking you now to fill, hey, God, this prayer room with your glory. Whether we've joined by Instagram or Facebook or conference call or YouTube, Lord, I want your glory to be revealed in in this place now so that everybody will know that we're not just on a prayer call, but we are in the presence of the living God. Lord, I thank you today for everything that you are to us. I thank you, my God, for grace and mercy and power. I Thank you, God, for everything that you have revealed yourself to be. And I give you the glory right now. I give you the glory, God. And I ask you to reveal your power and your presence. And Lord, your unexpected favor in the life of somebody. Lord, reveal your unexpected favor in somebody that's listening, somebody that's watching, and do something 
special today. God, as we pray for every name that's on the prayer list, every name, oh God, that's before us, we're praying, oh God, that you would minister to every need. We lift up Dr. and Mrs. Haywood and their family. We pray for missionary Janice Johnson and the Greater Refuge Temple Missionary Board. My God, we lift up Deacon and Sister Graves today. We pray for James Hardy Jr. We pray for the Adams family, for the Rupert family, for the Wilkerson family. We're lifting up Jason and Journey and Cody and Jacob and Reuben and Caleb and Latrice and Leah and Tyler and Ava and Megan and Caleb today. We're praying for Latanya this morning. We're praying for Bessie Drawn and their family. We're praying, my God, for Pastor Walter Atkins and family. We're praying for Mother Lily Gatlin in the name of Jesus. God, we're lifting up Greater Refuge Temple of New York City. We're praying for Refuge Temple of Burlington. We're praying for Greater Refuge Temple of Lakeland and Jacksonville. Refuge Temple of Columbia. Greater Refuge Temple of Charleston. My God, we're praying for Faith Refuge in Harrisburg. We're praying, my God, for Refuge in Pleasantville. We're praying for House of Faith in May's Landing. God, we're praying, my God, for the City of Refuge in Sanston, Virginia. We're praying, my God, for every congregation that's represented here. We're praying for the Community Church of Astoria. We're praying for the Community Church of Island. We're praying for Shiloh Baptist Church in Plainfield. We're praying for Shiloh Apostolic Cathedral. My God, in Atlantic City, every congregation that's here. Lord, I want to awaken the urgency of the hour in the saints, that we would know what time it is, that we would prepare our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our bodies. My God, for your soon coming. We don't know what day, we don't know what hour, but God, we want to be ready. So I'm praying that you would say Save the lost today. Anybody outside of the ark of safety, God, save them. Save them. Let them hear the word. Let them repent. Let them come to you, God, while it's still time. And God, save God to the utmost now. We're praying, God, that you would remember everybody, my God. Oh, God, everybody in any situation, save and deliver. Restore backsliders. Revive and reclaim backsliders. Lord, send revival to our churches to the end that souls are saved and lives are changed and transformed in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, remember those who are discouraged today. God, give them grace. Give them strength. Give them power to stand. My God, encourage their hearts now in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I'm praying today for the sick everywhere. Everywhere. God, there's somebody, oh God, sick, under the weather, afflicted with a condition, recovering from surgery. But whatever the need is, Lord, you are the bomb in Gilead and you you are the healer. So we pray for Mr. and Mrs. Montre. We pray for Dennis. We pray for Pam, for Peggy Clark. We pray for Janice McDuffie. We pray for Mother Alberta Mack. We pray, my God, for Sister Jesse Brisbane, for Sister Marlene Roseman. We pray for Zenobia. We pray for Angela Davis today. We pray for Pastor Sylvester and Lady Simone Williams. We're praying today for Deacon Perry Adams, for Deacon Jerome Wilson, for Deacon Chris Harrison today. We're praying for Elder Robert Toll. We're lifting up Sister Gina Herbert Williams today. We're praying for Sheila Howard, Angela Parker, Sister Ima, Pastor Spain, Deacon Wright, Deacon Malcolm. We're praying for Sister Dallas today. We're praying for Deacon Ganey. We're praying for Ann Bass Knight. We're praying for Pastor and Lady Winston. We're lifting up Bishop D today. We're praying for Miracle Destiny, for A.J. Blackwell, for Sherry Dennis today. We're praying for Zori Grant. Lord, because we know that you're a healer, God, undertake every condition, every situation, and bring healing. We're lifting up Brother Wiggins today. Brother and Mother Sherrod. Deacon and Mother Garland. We're praying, my God, for Dr. and Sister Haywood and Dr. Haywood's mother. We're praying, my God, for Mother Jill, for Mother Pride. God, we're lifting up in the name of Jesus. Mother Carter, Mother Chambers, Mother Moorhead today. We're praying for Lady Staten. Lord, stretch out your hand to those recovering. We're praying for Pastor Carr and Minister Carr. My God, we're lifting up Elder Tyson, Elder Smith today. We're praying for Mother Foster, Henry J., Brother Cliff, God, we're praying today for Mother Tanaj, Mother Holman, Missionary Simmons today. God, we're lifting up everybody, everybody that's sick, Lord. Remember Cynthia, Catherine, and Duchess. Lord, remember Marlette today. Remember Maurice in the name of Jesus. Remember my God, Tony. Remember Dennis today. Remember Kimberly and Chris, everybody. Anybody watching, Lord, that needs healing in their body, we're praying for them now. We're praying, my God, for Missionary Domingo. We're praying, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you remember my God, Deacon Grant, everybody that's sick, Lord,
Lord, touch them, raise them up. God, heal in the name of Jesus. We're praying, God, that you would go into every hospital, nursing home, rehab center. My God, go into the cancer ward, the COVID ward. God, God, go into the dialysis unit, the ICU unit, and God, bring healing in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm praying for grieving people everywhere, everywhere, God. Somebody's lost a loved one. Somebody's dealing with grief, and we're praying that you would touch them in the name of Jesus. Remember the Robinson family. Remember my God, my cousin James Roseboro and his family. Remember the Hill family, the Rose family. Remember Raven Brown and family. Remember the Curry family. Remember Dolores Moore. God, we're praying for the families of shooting victims. We're praying, oh God, for the many families that have lost in Turkey and Syria. Lord, today, 46,000 deaths, but God be with them now. We're praying for the Smith family, the Stokes family. We're praying for the Morris and Carney family. We're praying for Takesha Hill and her family. We're praying for Sister Diane Evans. We're praying for Ken who lost his mother. God, in the name of Jesus, comfort these grieving hearts now. God, remember, oh God, oh God, Lady Andrea Maxwell and the Maxwell family. Remember, my God, hallelujah, Dr. Phyllis Carter and her family. Remember, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Bishop Michael Fields, Shekinah, and the Fields Green family. Remember, my God, Mother Ida Harrell and her family. Mother Jacqueline Grant and her family. God, remember the Groover family today. Remember the Kramers. Remember the Hargroves. God, remember the Blunt family. Everybody grieving a loss. We're praying for them now. Remember the Bynums, the Taylors, the Lloyds, the Carters, the Giles family. Remember the Meadows family. Remember the Moyers today. Remember, my God, the Perkins family. God, give strength today to the Dockery family. Remember Pam, my God, hallelujah, her mother and her sisters. God, remember in the name of Jesus, the White family. God, we pray for Anita and the Brian Hopkins family, for Margie and the McLean, Melvin, and Street families. We're praying for the Ransom family, for the Jackson family, for the Green family, the Newkirk family, the Ned family. God, give comfort in the name of Jesus. God, I'm praying today that you would remember everybody that's grieving. Remember Brenda and the Alan McNeely family. Remember the Ransom family today. My God, remember, my God, Sean and Monique and the Gary Porter family. Trell and Ryan and the Alan Williams family. God, look on in the name of Jesus. Look on Tommy and Michelle and the Clark family, the Smith family today. God, look on the Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdies, the Sneeds, the Washington Fields family, the Martins today. Look on the Winninghams, the Bankses, God. Look on, my God, the Taylors. Lord, stretch out your hand upon, my God, the Felix family, the Zapata family, the Mannix, the Boodrums, the Gleans, the Arthurs, the Matherins today, the Briggs family, God, the Phillips family, the Taylors, the Josephs, God, look on the Davises today, the Allens, the Caldwells, the Hayses, the Moors. God, in the name of Jesus, my God, look on the Harbisons. Look on the Austins and the Adams family. Every grieving widow, widower, child, parent, sibling, we're praying for them now. God, I'm praying for the body of Christ. I'm praying for every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, every bishop and elder, every first lady, all the pastors, children, mothers, missionaries, ministers, deacons, all of the young people in the church. Church God, I'm praying today that you remember my God, musicians, singers, and psalmists, everybody in the church. God, give them comfort right now. Strengthen the church. Lord, let the church remain in a state of readiness. Let us have a state of awareness about the times in which we live. And God, let us have urgency about the preaching of the gospel, about prayer, about worship, about the service of the kingdom. Lord God, because one day we're all going to be judged and we want to be faithful. Oh, on the right side of judgment. So God, purify us, purge us, forgive us, clean us. Oh God, sanctify us and make us whole. God, I'm praying today for first responders, essential workers, firemen, policemen, EMTs. God, I lift up school employees and students everywhere. I pray for everybody that works to help people in private duty, in hospitals, nursing homes, rehab centers, God. Oh God, hospice centers, Lord, clinics, banks, offices, stores driving trucks, construction sites. Lord, protect and cover as diseases continue to move in our society. I pray your protection upon us. Lord, and I pray your healing upon the sick now in the name of Jesus Christ. And as you're healing, God, heal this troubled world. 
Lord, so much trouble across the globe. God, remember, oh God, in China, in the U.S., my God, the shootings, God, oh God, the violence, God, Lord, send your healing, oh God, upon the Ukraine, send your healing, my God, everywhere in the world, and heal the land, Jesus, of sin, heal the land of hatred, of violence, of jealousy, heal the land of injustice, heal the land of racism and sexism, and God, use your church to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Lord, we need you like never before. Be with us. Bless us in worship today. And let your glory be revealed in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Bless us and we give your name glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, come on and join me in giving God praise. Everybody, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, join me in giving God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Give him praise, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This is my declaration for today. I will see Jesus on his throne. My God, I will see Jesus on his throne. The whole purpose of faith, the whole purpose of this life, the whole purpose of salvation, the whole purpose of redemption, the whole purpose of deliverance is so that one day we can see Jesus Christ on his throne. I don't want to miss it, saints. I've gotten a glimpse just through John's, just through John's prophecy, just through John's vision. I've got a glimpse of what to expect, and I want to see it. I want to see the jasper. I want to see the sardine. I want to see the emerald. I want to see the rainbow around the throne. Everything that God has mentioned in his word, hallelujah, concerning heaven. I want to see that because I want to be there. Hallelujah. And if God gives me grace, saints, I will see him on the throne. Hallelujah. Not in judgment, but in mercy and in peace. God bless you today. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm trusting that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your Sunday is off to a great start. Look, you can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day today. This is Sunday, so you can join us at 10 a.m. for Sunday school. You can join us at 11.30 for morning worship. Today is youth day. Today is youth day. Our young people will be a part of the morning worship, and I have a word I believe that's going to bless the young people and and their family. So join us today at 1130 in the Sanctuary Refuge Temple or join us online and God is certainly going to bless you. This afternoon at 4 o'clock I will be with Apostle Ronnie and Lady Rabina Parson and the young people of the Living Church of Charlotte. The church is at W.T. Harris Boulevard in Charlotte and you can join us there at 4 o'clock in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're looking forward to a wonderful fellowship in Jesus' name. Look, let's stay connected in prayer. Hallelujah. Let's stay connected with our podcast, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, SoundCloud, and Spotify. All of this available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our radio broadcast airs every morning, Monday through Friday at 8.30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. Let me thank everybody that sees and sows and shares with this ministry. Your gifts help us to do so many things that we need to do, and we appreciate your giving. And if you want to be a blessing, you can make mail a gift to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. Again, that's Refuge Temple, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can give online. Our website is www.refugetemple, N is in North, C is in Carolina.com. Refuge Temple, NC.com is our um, website, and you can give on the donate page. You can also give if you have the GiveLify app. Just search 
for Refuge Temple Burlington and make your gift there. Look for the picture of the church. Or if you have Cash App, our Cash App is dollar sign, the number one refuge. Dollar sign one refuge is our Cash App and you can make your gift there. And we thank you for your giving, but we thank you most of all for being a part of the morning prayer family. We thank you for praying with us each day, whatever time of day you join us. We're just grateful that you are a part of the prayer. So we ask you to keep coming and keep praying. And as you're praying, pray for me, pray for Lady Davis, pray for our children, pray for my father, pray for my sisters, pray for my in-laws, our nieces, our nephews, our entire family. Pray for everybody that God would continue to bless and strengthen us. Pray for Refuge Temple that God would continue to bless us and pray one for another that the grace of God, hallelujah, may stand and be with us. The Lord allow all of us the privilege to be at the throne. The Lord allow all of us the privilege to be at the throne. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. God bless each of you. Shalom, shalom.